sometimes in that space between the waking world and dreaming. As I lay there on my back and I'm faced toward the ceiling, I would try to capture meaning by the feathers of its wings. As a thought became a bird, became the tune by which it sings. But no sooner had I heard it than its call had been and gone, and all it left behind it was the legacy of sun that left me in an emptiness to stare at the abyss with the certainty of nothing but that momentary bliss. And for two full months, within that ward, I lived inside my head, with nowhere else to go besides a chair beside the bed. So I sought that bird for company, for freedom and relief, as I fought to keep my sanity, my reason and belief. And the more I trained myself to seek, became the more I saw, and the less I feigned myself to be, allowed me to withdraw till I learned to see that certainty and permanence aren't real and that frequency of consciousness determines how we feel. So I turned that dial from helplessness to truly tuning in, from denial through to hopefulness, until I found myself begin to look beyond the prevalence of human apprehensions to find a realm of resonance and positive intentions. And now, within that space between the evening and the night, Sometimes I stand upon the bridge in the fading of the light just to watch the rise and fall of the swallows as they play and to hear the herons call at the closing of the day. For in a world where isolation is synonymous with loss and the strain of separation bears its own immoral cost, I wish I had the answers and I wish I had the words to encapsulate the wisdom in the language of the birds.